So uh, I'm going to talk uh, a, a brief review on, in the history of uh, HPC development in China, and then some issues in uh, towards the access scale computers. And finally, I will uh, give an introduction to the new key project uh, in China in the 13th five year plan. So uh, uh, I will give some uh, uh, historical facts. So in the past uh, 15 years, we have continuously three key projects on HPC in China. So from 2002 to 2005, we, we had the first one it's called the High Performance Computers and Core Software. So the result of that key project is a China National Grid, that's an infrastructure for HPC in China, and also uh, some uh, teraflops uh, scale machines and the, the second key project is called the Hyperactivity Computers and Grid Service Environment. From name you know that uh, it's, uh, it's an era of the grid. So we have developed the uh, 200 teraflops machine during that project, and also a, a set of application software. And uh, from the name you know that we shift from the high performance to high productivity to emphasize other factors uh, is, uh, you know, other than the performance. So that means uh, application performance, the efficiency in program the development, the portability of the programs, and the robustness of the, the system. And uh, currently, we are at the end of the third uh, key project. That's officially that's a 2011 to 2016. So it's called the High Productivity Computer and the Application Service Environment. We emphasize the application aspects of the uh, program, and also we developed 200 petaflops machine during this uh, project. So uh, this is uh, this is some uh, historical data. So in in the past 20 years, China has made a significant progress in HPC. So in 2000, uh, in 1996, we had the Downing 1000. That's a 2.5 gigaflop system. So 20 years later, we have the Sunway Type 2 Labs, that's a 125 petaflop machine. So that means uh, performance increase about 50 million times in 20 years. And there are some milestone systems. So every five years, we deliver some system because we our program is uh, in the pace of five years. So in 2004, that's a Downing 4000. In 2010 and 2011, that's a Kemper 1 a and uh, uh, some uh, some way blue light, and then now that's a third five year plan of uh, uh, the period that's uh, uh, Tianhe 2 and uh, uh, some way uh, type of light. So, those two machines uh, are the effort of the third key project. And also uh, for the national IPC environment, in 1996 we have only one national IPC center in Hebei equipped with uh, Downing One that's a uh, 640 uh, MIPS machine. Uh, in 2006, we have a China National Grid composed of uh, 17 national supercomputing centers and HPC centers. And uh, also the, the with uh, world leading uh, class supercomputing resource. And also we uh, emphasize application aspects. We establish some uh, application village, we call the village because it's kind of a community to uh, aggregate the resources and also applications for the end users. So we establish domain-oriented application values on top of the same grid, and also we try, we try to explore some business models between the villages and the underlying uh, same grid infrastructure. So currently we have the industrial product design optimization, new drug discovery, and the digital media uh, application village. <coughs> And uh, for the uh, application in 1996, we have uh, uh, really, you know, it's a couple <coughs> of uh, important applications related to the weather forecasting and oil exploration. So the parallelism at that time is about 16 to 32 uh, processors. And uh, we, we were heavily relying on the import uh, software. Uh, last year in 2016, our application has uh, being extended to many areas, and the current reach to 10 million core, and uh, won, uh, won the, the Golden Bell Prize uh, last year. 
And also we have de developed a number of application software, uh, like the aircraft design, the CCFT software, the high-speed train uh, applications, oil and gas exploration, etc. So that's the application that is done. We have learned a lot of uh, lessons from our uh, past experience. So I gave some uh, major ones. The first one is that uh, we, we realized the coordinated effort of the national uh, research program and the regional development plan uh, is very crit uh, critical to the development. So it's not only uh, for the matching money to uh, develop the system, but also to develop the infrastructure. For example, the joint effort by the most and the local government for establishing the National City Living Center. And also the multilateral cooperation is very crucial for the success of the, the, the development. And the Super Community Center played a very important role in you know, determining the metrics for the system development and also uh, in selection of the teams to develop the system. And enterprise, uh, the companies participate in the national R&D program like uh, Lenovo, Inspur, Soga, etc. They, all, uh, they are all involved uh, in China national research program, which not only promote the development of the system, but also uh, increase improving their technical uh, talents and capabilities in, uh, in the market. And the application organizations usually lead the, the software development for the application, and that uh, uh, somehow guarantees the adoption of the uh, resulting software. And finally, we emphasize the balance and the coordinated development of the machine, the environment, and also the applications. Those are th uh, three pillars in our uh, project. So, but we have also identified a lot of problems. So the major problems uh, are listed here. So we are still lack of the national uh, long-term program for uh, high cost computing. That means we have to compete with other topics, other uh, disciplines every five years. So that's why you know our system delivered. You know, it's a it's a it's a step uh, towards the end of the five year plan. <coughs> so that's uh, we have to, to do that every five years. And we are weak in kernel uh, IPC technology. You know, it's uh, it's a processor accelerator. That's a major uh, issues in China. And also uh, the, the, for the device for the novel device like. <coughs> The storage and the internet; those are also bottleneck for the, uh, continue, uh, the, the sustainable development. And also, uh, we are somehow way in the software spec and in the algorithm spec for the larger scale parallel algorithm and in the software implementation, which uh, is not uh, uh, you know, developed that well. And the soft the application software is the bottleneck. You know, Though we have developed a set of uh, you know, uh, important software for the uh, domain applications, but uh, we are still heavily rely on the imported software. But those software are expensive. And somehow, uh, a small uh, uh, you know, scale in parallelism and also restricted by the export regulation sometimes. And then another shortage is uh, the, the shortage of the, the talent people, especially for those knows the IT and also knows the domain and knowledge. So that those people are in a very uh, demand and budget. We, we just don't have enough people. And the lack of a multi-disciplinary uh, uh, collaboration is not a problem. In China, everybody wants to be the leader. And uh, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a problem caused by the evaluation system. So, uh, second, I would like to talk about some issues toward the access scale system. So, the, those are the issues I think is prevent the success of the access system in, in our country. We all know that there are some major uh, challenges or the obstacle, uh, obstacles towards the access scale. The power consumption issues, the performance of applications, and the programmability issues, and the resilience and reliability issues. So those challenges have to be addressed, affected by the, 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 the coordinated effort. So we have to, to make trade-offs between performance, power consumption, and programmability when deciding the architecture. And we have to, to support the long-time non-stop operations in order to, you know, to 
fulfill some significant tasks and also have to support a wide range of applications with reasonable efficiency. So those are issues we have to continuously consider. So from an architecture point of view, so we have to uh, somehow <coughs> explore novel architecture beyond the current one, the accelerated architecture and many based architectures. So that's our uh, major task. So uh, for the heterogeneous architecture, so should we follow the current co-process approaches, what's somehow called the partitioned uh, heterogeneous architecture? That means uh, a bunch of uh, accelerator and a bunch of CPU, they are equal in the system and uh, can be built on edge on demand. And uh, that issue is raised because of the, uh, some effects you know, observed from the current system. But some, sometimes, uh, you know, the accelerators are not used uh, enough, so they are settled, uh, just, uh, just idle. And the difficulties in uh, use both CPU and the, co uh, the accelerator jointly to solve some problem, and also the bottleneck caused by the co approaches uh, in moving data between CPU and the accelerator. And also we are considering the application-aware architecture. That means on-chip integration. Probably we should integrate a special purpose unit and the, the general purpose unit. So that's an idea borrowed from Professor Andrew Chen uh, of the US. So should we develop a set of a powerful and very useful tool set or to develop a Swiss knife like a general purpose system? So that's a kind of a system design uh, consideration. Uh, we, we, we think that we have to use the right tool to do right things. That means the future system might be a set of a, a you know, special purpose unit together with a general purpose unit. But how to use that kind of system? Should it be, it be a dynamic reconfigurable? And what, what kind of a program support needed by those architectures? It's a memory system. That's a, a, it's a long <coughs> uh, you know, term issues. Always, uh, we also mentioned the, the, the memory wall. So uh, we are pursuing the, the capacity, latency, and the bandwidth. So we, we have to have uh, some kind of uh, consideration to cover uh, three factors. So one approach is to increase the capacity and the lower the part of the center by using ERP run together with the MVM. Uh, but then it's, uh, it's a data placement issues, so kind of uh, an issue similar to the cache approaches. And we, we can approach, uh, improve the bandwidth and the latency by using 3D stacking and technology which we have already seen some devices on the market. And also we have to reduce the data move by placing the data closer to the process. That means that we have near processor on chip VRAM or simple functions in memory. And also to reduce the data copy cost by doing the memory space uh, in heterogeneous system. So memory, space, uh, memory system is a big issue. Interconnect, similar to memory, we are pursuing the, the low latency, have high bandwidth and the energy, low energy consumptions. So we, uh, for the excess scale, we are uh, somehow looking for the high scalable uh, interconnect, which can connect uh, up to you know, more than 10,000 nodes and uh, requires a low hop, low latency topology, and also reliable and intelligent routing methods. And uh, to improve the performance of interconnect, we have to adopt new technology like the silicon photonics communications, the optical interconnect uh, between the components, and also the, you know, the, to look for the miniature of the optical devices which can be applied on board. Programming is uh, a big issue for the heterogeneous systems. So we, we have to address those issues of so how to effectively express the parallelism, the dependence, the data sharing, and execution and semantics by the programming uh, tools. And also to help the problem decomposition appropriate for the heterogeneous systems. So we have proposed uh, hard stake approaches towards uh, the many core uh, parallel programming uh, by proposing new programming models, uh, new uh, program language extensions and the compiler functionalities, the parallel debugging facilities, 
the runtime support and the organizations, and also define the architecture support to the parallel uh, program. The computational models and algorithms uh, is another big issue. So we, we try to follow up a, a full chain innovation, so from the mathematical methods to the computer algorithm and to the, the implementation and the organizations. Because a good mathematical method is quite open, more effective than hardware organization. So that's a very essential uh, to, to, to optimize. And also architecture aware algorithm are somehow you know, uh, important implementations. We have to implement those uh, mathematical methods on, on, on our system according to the architecture uh, characteristics. Resilience is, uh, is also big issues because the future system will be very, you know, huge number of numbers and huge amount of components, very short mean time before failure. So how to uh, guarantee the long term uh, continuous operation on top of those systems is, uh, is a problem. So we have to adopt a reliability uh, measure at different level from the, the component, from the devices, from the node, and also the, from the system level. And the software, hardware coordination is, uh, is key to the success in this aspect. Because we have to address those uh, issues like the checkpointing, the fast uh, saving and recovery of the content, contents, and also the fault tolerance, not only in hardware, but also in the software and application level. And the tools uh, are very uh, you know, important to improve the performance. Uh, which is especially uh, you know, critical to China because we are forcing to use our homegrown processes to develop our system. But for the commercial tool set and also the research tool set are not <coughs> appropriate or not uh, available for our processor. So that means we have to develop some tools for our processor. So the tools include the basic three kinds of parallel debugger for the correctness the parallel performance a tuner for performance and also the energy optimizer for the energy efficiency. And uh, finally, we are in the uh, urgent need for ecosystem for the IPC applications. So this is a, a kind of special uh, problem in China because I just mentioned that we have to use our homegrown processors. This is not a kind of option because we have to do that. Otherwise, we, we, we don't have the resource to the exascale system. That means we have to establish an ecosystem for our processor. So including the languages, compilers, OS, uh, the tools, and also the application development support and the application software itself. So this ecosystem is not easy to build up, and especially in a short time. So we need coordinated effort from the hardware developers, the third-party software, and also the end users. So in fact, we, we, I don't know if you noticed that uh, the Sunway team announced that uh, they are going to develop Sunway Micros. I think that's a kind of effort. So we have to have the product family instead of a single machines. Otherwise, nobody will be willing to, will be willing to, to provide software. So we, we hope that we can make some ecosystem by joint effort of uh, industry, academia, and users. So finally, I will talk about the new project uh, in five years. So the National uh, Research and Devel uh, Development uh, System are in, in the you know, process of reform. China uh, has combined uh, more than 100 research programs into five tracks. So the first track is the basic research program. That's an NSFC. That's a basic research. The second track is called the Mega Science and Technology Program. That's a very much mission-oriented, like the commercial aircraft, like the, the processor and the, the key uh, software, etc. And we are at the, uh, at the third track, you know, it's a key R&D program. That's a merge of formal high-tech program, a key uh, basic research program, and also the enabling program. So IPC is among this track. And then there are two tracks. Uh, one is uh, enterprise innovation program, which is more uh, oriented to enterprises. And the facility is a talent program, which is like the national lab, etc. So uh, I just mentioned that we have launched a new project, new key project, uh, 
we have received uh, in the 13th five-year plan. So started last year uh, in 2016. So the motivation for this new project uh, you know, includes several aspects. First of all, it's to address a grand challenge uh, problem that the country is facing, like the energy shortage, like the environment, like the, the climate change, and enable industry transformation because China is undergoing kind of an economic uh, transformation from the manufacturer-centric to the service-centric or the innovation-centric economy. So HPC has its role in promoting this kind of transformation. And also for social development and the people's benefit, like the new drug discovery, uh, precision medicine, and the digital media for entertainment, etc. And uh, finally, that's a more fundamental, the, the traditional role to enable scientific discovery. So in higher energy physics, and the uh, competition of cancer, etc. And uh, secondly, uh, to develop extra scale uh, computer can promote computer industry by technology transfer in China. So we have learned that from our uh, historical uh, facts. And also, uh, it's important to develop access scale system by self-controllable technology. That's a lesson we have learned uh, in the recent embargo uh, regulation. Uh, so that's a motivation for a new uh, key project in ITC. So the goal is to strengthen R&D uh, in kernel technology and person in the leading uh, position in high-voltage computer development and to promote HPC applications and establishing an uh, application ecosystem and also to build up uh, HPC infrastructure with service features and exploring the paths to the HPC service industry. So the major heads, as I just mentioned, there are three false uh, tasks, uh, machine set development, the application development, and also the environment. So each uh, task will cover basic research to the animal applications. The task one, access scale computer plan. The basic research uh, includes the novel high points interconnect, that's a very uh, essential, it's not only for access scale, but post access scale. And also the programming and the execution model for access scale system. The technology includes the three prototypes. So, we, we hope that those prototypes will explore possible architecture and the technical implementation strategies for the access scale. So the, the system will be uh, in small scale, for example, the 512 nodes, 5 to 10 teraflops per node, and the 10 to 20 gigawatts uh, per watt uh, energy efficiency. So currently there are three teams uh, led by uh, Subway, uh, Kenkula, and uh, Sogar. So they have a different approach towards a prototype so far, but uh, there is no clear uh, technical uh, solution for accessibility. And uh, for other uh, key technology, include the architecture, the, the high, highly efficient node, and the high performance processor and accelerated design, access scale system software, scalable interconnect, parallel I.O access scale infrastructure like the cooling, assembly, high density assembly, etc. So uh, uh, based on those technology research, we will develop an uh, access scale system. So it's, it's, it's kind of modest uh, goal so to develop a system with the access flops in P. And uh, the main type efficiency will be greater than 60% because of the, the, the budget limitation, the main memory is uh, only 8 to 10 uh, petabytes. So that's a major problem. You know, we, we would like to encourage the team to increase the amount of uh, memory capacity, but they said no, it's a budget is it's not enough to do that. <coughs> and also for the storage, and for the energy uh, efficiency, it's only 30 uh, gigawatts per watt. That means uh, the total system will be about more than 30 <coughs> megawatts. So that's uh, below the, the target of the DOE. And uh, then the larger scale system management, etc. So that's a system we have to develop by the end of uh, 2020. The second task is uh, application development itself. The basic research includes the computable modeling and the computational methods for access scale system. And also, 
from this uh, next year that will be a scalable and highly efficient parallel algorithm uh, effort and it will be parallel uh, library for access to the system. So those two are the basic research topics. Well, the key technology uh, essentially is the most, uh, most efforts focused on the programming support. So that we will develop uh, the program uh, framework for access scale software development, including the framework for the structured mesh, unstructured mesh, the mesh-free uh, combinatory uh, geometry, finite element, and uh, graph computing. So that framework is supposed to support the development of more than 40 uh, software with a parallel scale of a million core parameters. And then the key technology include, uh, also include the, the demo applications. You know. uh, those cover both technology and application specs for the micro devices. There are four I just mentioned uh, the micro reactor, the micro aircraft, the micro earth system, and also the micro engine. Those are uh, topics very uh, important in China, in the country's development. And the uh, set of uh, parallel software for the domain applications, for example, the complex engineering project and critical uh, equipment, numerical simulation of ocean, design of energy efficient life food machinery, the drug discovery, the electromagnetic environment simulation, etc. And for the scientific uh, discovery, focused on four areas material science, bioenergy physics, astro uh, physics, and uh, life sciences. And uh, finally, that's uh, uh, very uh, you know, important for the application development. We will establish a platform for HPC application software development. So that's a kind of an ecosystem effort. We, we have to do several levels of uh, things to establish a national, national uh, level uh, centers for software development to build up a platform for HPC software development and optimization develop the tool set for performance, energy efficiency, and pre- and post-processing, and also to build up the software repository by integrating the software development at the key project and also develop at the, the software centers. So this will be a joint effort by the national secret media centers, and the university institutes, and the industry. Uh, the national secret media center uh, in Guangzhou will lead this effort. So the third aspect of our path is to divide the further the HPC environment. So the basic research covers the models and the architecture to support computational services. That means a kind of service model. And then the virtual data space, which is uh, quite uh, currently is a way in our software stack. We have to develop uh, architecture and the you know the, the cross domain uh, cross domain. Uh, virtual data space, and also to facilitate integration and access to the heterogeneous distributed data. And for the key technology, it mainly focused on the mechanism and the platform for national HPC environment. So we will provide the technical support to run the service mode uh, environment, and also to upgrade the national uh, HPC environment uh, by adding new machines to the environment. So the computing resource is integrated with greater than 500 petabytes, the storage will be greater than 500 petabytes, application software and tools will be you know, more than 500, and the users, usually the, the, the key users, will be greater than uh, 5,000. And we will establish a set of a demo application on top of the, the national Super uh, high performance computing environment. So there are several uh, categories of uh, service uh, system will be established. Same grid. One is integrated business platform. For example, the complex product design, IPC enabled EP platform. <coughs> and second uh, category is application ability. That's a continuous effort uh, from the current project. So it's innovation and the optimization for industrial product drug discovery and SMB computing and simulation platform. That's a new one. And finally, we have a new uh, effort on education that's try to solve the current uh, problem. So we will establish a, a platform for HVC education, provide contents, uh, computing resources, and services 
to undergraduate and graduate students. We hope that that platform will somehow help to solve the talent shortage of talent. The call has been issued, there are two calls that have been issued. The first call issued last year, the early of last year, and 19 projects have selected. The second call issued later on last year, and we had just uh, finished an evaluation of the project, there will be 18 projects supported this year, mainly focused on applications. And those two rounds of call covered most of the topics of the key project, except the access scale system development. That will be the major task of the next call, that's a call for 2018. But uh, the, the team will be selected based on the result of the prototype system development and also uh, based on the, the technical approach toward the access scale system. So that, that's all I would like to present. Thank you.